Hey everyone, welcome to another video in this series about creating a chat app in Flutter the right way. And in this video, we'll be looking at refactoring a few of our classes so that we might lay the foundation for the final few videos um, to complete the application. But before we get into that, I just want to demo to you guys what the final application will look like. And so as you can see here, we have three iPhones. We have an iPhone 8, a iPhone 12 Pro, and a regular iPhone 12. And we have three users online at the moment. As you can see here on Jesse's iPhone, we have Han Solo and we have Fernando. And at the moment, there isn't any messages um, shared between them. So I'm just going to start from Jesse's iPhone. And as you can also see, we have both the dark and light mode being displayed here. So if I should select Han Solo and send him a message, if I should say hi, then you should see that the message shows up here to Han Solo saying hi from Jess. And as you can see, there's one here that says one unread message, the red indicator. And also on Jess's iPhone where she says hi, you can see it's a gray tick that shows that this message has not been read as yet. So if I should go into the message from Han Solo's iPhone, then you can see that it now becomes a green tick to say yes, the message was read. And now if I should go to Han Solo and say hello, as you can see, the typing comes up here to show, suggest to show that the other person is typing. So if I say hello there and I send that message, then no, hello there goes to Jess and you can see the green tick also that shows that the, the message was read. So if I go back now and again, if I start typing, then you should see the typing indicator that suggests that Jess is typing. So I say, how are you? And I go ahead and send that. Again, how are you is displayed here. And the number of unread messages is shown in, in the indicator here. And I can open up the message and the tick is shown that shows that the message is read. So I can also go ahead and send a message to Fernando. Hello. And that should show up here on Fernando's phone. So go ahead again, open that up and say hi. Then that message is displayed on Jesse's iPhone and also I can go to Han Solo's iPhone and send a message to Fernando here. So if I go here and I say hello, send that message, then you can see there's a new message from Han Solo and that message comes at the top can go there and we can see hi and the message is displayed we can see the typing indicator if i go here start typing you can see the typing indicator on han solo's uh, on the iphone here message sent and so that is the final application that we are working towards, guys. So we will now begin the video and work on completing the few remaining videos so that we can have our application in this final state and ready to go. Here in VS Code, 
we're going to start our refactorings by starting from the changes need to be done to our services and then from there to our blocks to our UI to the composition group. So the first change that I want to make is inside of our chat module. If we should go there and we should find our message service, we have the contract. What I want to do here is instead of returning a Boolean value, I want to return the message that was created. And I'm doing this because the message ID is generated on the database at the database level. And so we want the ID from the generated message so that we can store that message ID inside of our local database. Without that, the ID will be null and that will cause some problems further down the line. So now that I've done that, as you can see now, I need to go ahead and modify the send method here to return a message instead. And this is a pretty simple change. All I need to do is inside here for my messages, inside the insert, I need to go ahead and add the option to return changes. I'm just going to say return changes and that will be set to true. Now when we add the record to the database, it will return the inserted record. And so instead of returning a Boolean value here, I'm just going to say message from JSON and get the value from that was returned, which be inside of record changes and I need to get first since that will be an array new val. So that will be in the new val JSON. Go ahead and save that. And that's all the changes we need to our message service. So let me go ahead and close these windows next inside of our receipt service i want to make the change where inside of our receipt service i want to remove the receipt when the receipt is delivered. And this is similar to what is done in the message service. So I'm just going to create a method remove delivered receipt. And there I'll pass the receipt. So now I just have to create this method here copy this will accept a receipt and we simply access the rethink instance here You access the resting instance, get the receipts table, and simply get the particular receipt based on the ID and delete. And then we want to give the option of return changes that should be false do not want the changes when it's deleted 
go ahead and run that with our connection. So that's the simple change that we need for our receipt service. We can go ahead and close that. And next to our next refactor, refactoring. Next we want to refactor our type in notification. And we want to refactor that to include the user service. And as you do these refactorings, be mindful that they might cause your tests to not be compiled. So you need to check the tests that they are working and make the necessary changes. I'm not gonna do that here, but you can go ahead and do that. And I'll accept the user service. And the reason for this is that instead of accepting a user here, I am going to say, get the user, or the receiver of this receipt, I'm gonna say, go ahead and use the user service to fetch the user and that will be in the receipt in the event rather the typing event itself so event two so that should get the user so now i will check if the receiver so if the receiver if is not active then return false so to simply put if this person is not online then i do not want this person to receive any receipt so i do not want to send any receipt any typing event not receipt to this person and as you can see, now we have our test not operating as it should. And I'm just going to go ahead and pass null here. Again, I am doing that. There is no two. I am just doing this. So I can get along with the video, but you are encouraged to ensure that your tests are passing and that they are doing what they, they are expected to do. So now we have modify or refactor or, or typing notification. Next, we want to refactor our data source. So that's not inside of our chat module, but now inside of our data here, I want to add a additional method. And this method will update the message, the message receipt. So this will take a message ID along with the receipt, the status of the receipt. Now we can go ahead and add this method to our implementation here. should be at the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is to simply say return and I want this to be executed in a transaction. EB transaction
then all I want to do is to get the transaction and run a update query on it. So in this case, I'm updating the messages table and I'm updating that. Time updating is the receipt field and I'm updating it with what is passed in here, the value of the receipt status. Just go ahead and set our where condition, which is where the ID is equal to, and our where arguments would be the message ID. And for our conflict algorithm, I'm just going to say conflict algorithm replace. So now we have our update message receipt. But I also want to modify some of the other methods here to run inside of a transaction to avoid a database uh, deadlock. Because what's, what can happen is that we can receive multiple messages from the user and then we'll, the database will try to insert those multiples, but they are not being inserted into a batch. So we can have a, a deadlock or we can, while there's an insert of a record, a receipt can happen at the same time and we now need to update the message. So we can have deadlocks happening if we do not run these uh, queries inside of uh, transactions. So what I'm going to do is for these inserts for add chat, I'm going to run all these inside of a transaction. So can DB transaction. Then I'll simply move this up here. Go ahead, await. Now we have that executing inside of a transaction. Then the similar thing here with the insertion of a message. Transaction. Now, in, this should be run on the transaction object and not the DB object. Can move this up here. Await this on the transaction. So we have all these already running in transactions, which is good. For query, we do not need that to run in transaction since we are not writing anything to the database. So there we have it. And I just want to change also the conflict algorithm here to say roll back if there's a conflict. So there we have the update to our data source. I'll close those as you can see again we have test failing here our message block test but we'll get to that as soon as possible so now we'll go to our states management folder we'll go to our message inside of our message block when a message is sent here, 
we want to store this in a variable, then we want to go ahead and pass that variable along in the state. So what we have done is basically to fetch the message that was created in the DB so that we can have the generated ID for that message and we pass that message along in the state so that we'll have access to it to save inside of our local database. So now as you can see we have our test out of work here. So I'm just going to go ahead and return null here just to get rid of the error. So next, I'm going to modify instead of onboarding or onboarding qubit here. And I want to modify this to cache the user when the user is onboarded. But in order to cache the user, I will have to create that method or that class. So I'm just going to create a folder called cache. And inside of it, I'm going to create a local cache. And this will have two methods, one future void. This method will be save and it will take the key in a JSON object. So string dynamic. The other method will be to return a JSON object based on the key fetch. So let's just go ahead and quickly implement that class local cache. And for its dependencies, I want, I'm going to use a shared preference. So shared preferences and inside of our constructor, we will just inject the shared preferences. So no. With our fetch method, I'm just going to say return JSON decode. And I'm going to decode what I get from my shared preferences, get string based on the key that is passing. Otherwise, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to return a empty JSON object. And JSON decode need to import that from dart convert. Similarly here, for our save method, I'm just going to go ahead and say await shared preferences. and set string, set the key and the value should be JSON. I 
need to say JSON encode. We need to encode the map that is passed in. So now we can go back to our onboarding qubit. And here we'll need to inject our local cache. So now, after we have created the user, we can go ahead and cache the user. So I'm just going to say user JSON is equal. And it should be the same thing as username. That will be equal to the created user dot username we have active gonna set active to true and we have the photo URL created user photo URL and then we have the ID, which is the created user ID. So we have that JSON, now we can say local cache, save, just gonna call the key user and save the user JSON. just before I emit the state here. So that's the change that we need for our onboarding qubit here. We'll also need to go ahead inside of our onboarding state and make this variable accessible. Local cache, onboarding qubit, that's good. So next, we are gonna go to our UI, and inside of our onboarding page, we want to create our onboarding router that will route to the appropriate page, in this case, which is the home page when we connect successfully. This will have one method which is on session success will have the bill context and also the user that is being onboarded. In this case, I'm just going to call this user me. Now for the implementation boarding. So this is the interface. So call that I boarding Router implements I onboarding router. Create that one method. So here this will accept a widget, and this is the widget that we should route to. But this widget will be passed in, will be function that returns the widget. This function will accept the user and call this function on session 
connected. So you go ahead and board and rotor and inject that. So now we can use the navigator to say push and remove until we have the context. What we need now is a material route and for the builder I'm just gonna call the on session connected method and pass in the user. In this case, it will be the home page where we are injecting the user that was connected to the home page. And here, I want to say wrote return false and the reason for this is so that this route with the previous route which will be the the onboarding page will be removed from the navigation stack so that you cannot go back to the un onboarding page once you have onboarded so now we have our router set up we can go ahead and use it in our onboarding page. So here we have our onboarding page. I'm gonna say final onboarding router. Can inject that. this uh, router that's good so now all we need to do is call the necessary function on the router in this case here inside of our builder so i'm just going to go ahead and change this builder to block consumer and now with a block consumer I can set up a listener so now I can add a listener here and simply say that if the state is on boarding success state then we can go ahead and see widget dot Router dot onboarding session and pass the user which is inside the state. So state user. Great. So now we uh, we have our once we have onboarded successfully, we can now route to the home screen and pass in the user that was just onboarded so now inside of our composition route we need to get that set up so now we just go ahead and set up those dependencies so 
So I want the cache because I'm going to use that local cache. The local cache uses shared preference. So I'll get that when I'm instantiating the local cache. But outside of that, I want a global message block since this will be used on both the home screen and the chat screen. So now I can go ahead and instantiate these. So it's a local cache. First for local cache, I need it, the shared preference instance. So I can say SP equals await shared preferences get instance. Then local cache equal to local cache. pass in the shared preference and then my message block will be equal to message block which uses the message service so now inside of my board in here Go ahead and inject the local cache. And I need the onboarding router. So I onboarding router, router equal. Then for the session connected, I am going to pass in the compose home queue, home UI rather, because that's exactly what I want to happen when we call the method on the router. So for the home UI, I need now to pass in a user so now instead of using a local message block here i am going to use the global message block that we've created so now What I'm going to do is to create a method that determines which page is the startup page. So I'm just going to create a method widget, just return the widget, call it start. And this method will get the user from the local cache local cache fetch the key is user and if I'm gonna say if the user is empty then compose onboard in UI otherwise compose home UI 
and pass in the user that is from our local cache. There we have it, user from JSON, pass in the JSON that we fetch from the local cache. Now inside of our main, instead of having the compose home UI here, what we're going to do is to say first page is equal to composition root dot start and then we simply pass this first page into our app so now we'll have our final first page here which is a widget And we simply pass that inside the my app constructor. Now we can go ahead pass the first page, set the first page as a home. So you can see we have our widget. I'm just gonna remove this file since it's not used. So now we can go ahead and run this app. So here we have our app started. And if you start try to start your app and there was an error, the issue is in the JSON decode of the local cache. So simply put your null or nil JSON object there in quotes and that should fix the issue. So now we are at this start screen. I can go ahead and create a user. I'm just gonna say fry. Yeah, add a picture. And also, let me ensure that my image server is started. That should be good. So if we create this user, then this user is connected successfully, then we should go to the home screen. But I think it's gonna crash when we go to the home screen, home screen since we have some hard coded values there. So let us try and see. Well, there we have it and it did not, it did crash. Because we have users in the database, but their images are not in the server. So let me remove these users quickly from the DB to resolve the issue. So I have removed those records from the database. So now everything is working as it should. And we have our home screen here in display. So now what I want to do is to get rid of this hard coded user here. Then I'm just gonna say user, and this user will come from the what we have, what we will pass in here to the home screen. So let me go ahead and add that also. In this case, this user is me. 
me know this user will be widget dot me. So now inside of our composition root, we simply go here and pass in that user back to our home screen. Pass the user. So now I'm going to extract this into a method. Just going to call this initial setup. So no So here what I want to do is to decide if this user is connected or not. So if the user that is passing from the local cache if that user is not active, meaning that the user disconnected their phone so they are no longer active, then I am going to go ahead and read my home qubit and tell it to connect. Otherwise, return the user since that user will be connected. So I go ahead, copy and paste those inside of active users. I want also to pass that user so I can filter out my user from the list of active users. And then also after that, I want to subscribe. So here I'll remove this in it shall. So now I'll have to go to my home qubit and make those changes. On active user, I should accept a user. And after I fetch those users online, I'm just gonna say users dot remove where element dot id equal equal user at id so i remove my user from being displayed there also i want to add the connect method here so i'll quickly do that method so here for my connect method i simply fetch from the local cache then i go ahead Set the user to active, set the date, the last scene to no, and connect using the user service, then return that user. So I have to inject the local cache into my home qubit. So back in the composition root, I'll have to go ahead and say local cache.
now back to home that should be working perfectly fine so now because I'm using the automatic mix in a live client I need to call the super build method here to get rid of the warning now that I have this set up let me go ahead and instead of this hard-coded value I can say user put a URL and the name user name go ahead and save let's refresh and now the correct username is being displayed there so now let us go to our chats view So we have our update, we subscribe to receive chats, but also I want to call here the list of chats from the local DB so that it can fetch when that loads. So let's say context read, chart, chats qubit get the list of chats so now let me go ahead in my database and try and send a chat to that person so we have nothing happening here let us try and see what's the cause of that so now we have the chat showing up I had the incorrect uh, chat ID here so now we have that chat showing up so let us go ahead and subscribe to receive typing notification here so the first thing I want to do is if If chats is empty, I'm just going to return a container here. This is the case if it loads from the database and it's empty. Otherwise, I'm going to say context read. That I want to read here is typing notification block and I want to add the event here which is the typing notification event on subscribe and who is subscribing my user so that means I need to pass the user here into this chat so final user user this user so now I can see widget dot user So I want to subscribe and then users with chat I'm gonna say chats go ahead and map for each user from ID so these to list 
these are the users that I'm subscribing to receive type in notification from so now inside of our home inside of our home where we have chat let's pass in the user so there we have that type in notification is not a part of this so inside of our composition root we will have to create our type in notification and i'm going to make this global again since i'll be using it elsewhere in the message We also need our type in notification service. Let's initialize that here. Then we have our type in notification block. Now all we need to do is go to our home UI and we need to add that here. So we need another block provider. And our typing notification block. Now that's there. Let's refresh. That should be there now. So we subscribe there. Now let us display our typing indicator here in the subtitle. So I have gone ahead and add that typing notification block builder to our subtitle. So what I've done is basically to use the block builder for the typing notification and I'm always returning the text. I'm always returning the text that has the message content. So what I've done here is I've checked the state to see if we receive a success state if the event is type in start and if the event is from the person or the ID that is associated with this particular chat. So remember we have a list of chats happening here and we can have multiple typing events happening at the same time on multiple chats. So that is why uh, the, the from from the typing event must equal to the from that's associated with that particular chat. And what we have done here is to add the event to a list. So I have a typing events here. I add it to a list so that we can display all those typing, uh, the word typing on all those different chats at the same time. We have a similar thing if we receive success, but this time it's stop, typing stop. So we basically remove that event from the list of typing events. And we say that if the typing events contains uh, the ID for any of the particular chats, we are going to show the typing text otherwise show the least the most recent message and that's what we have there another thing i want to do is to go all the way down here where we have this if statement here so instead of returning a container i'm going to return a sized box
dot shrink. So now we have our typing event set up for our chat here on the chats screen or the messages screen. So we can go ahead and test that out. So here I have set up a to insert a typing event into the DB which the event type will be start. So now if I go ahead and run that, let us see what happens. As you can see now, typing is displayed there. That suggests that the user is typing. If I go ahead and send stop, then it should stop and show the user message. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking at creating the message thread screen where we begin to send message back and forth with each other. So thank you guys for tuning in and see you in the next video. Just one or two more videos and this series will be over. So thank you for staying with me up until now and see you in the next one. Remember the code is on GitHub and remember to like, share, subscribe if you haven't so that we can grow together as Flutter developers. See you in the next video.